Um, good afternoon, David Atkins, target individual. Um, not doing so well, but I'm forcing myself to do this video. Um, today I'm going to be talking about negative association mapping, and it's how they term your friends and family against you. And it's something different besides smear campaigns. And I know a lot of target individuals will be able to relate to this. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to read Psalms one and I'm going to start the information. I promise you, you're going to find this helpful. And it's going to explain a lot to you, especially um, TIs in the community who um, have experienced this. And I know a lot of you have. I know I have a lot of times. Okay. And it's how, you know, family and friends and stuff all just turn against you. And you wonder why. And there's other ways besides smear campaign. There's another technique they use because it's called negative association conditioning. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to explain to you how it works. But um, I was put on my heart to read Psalms 1 today and it's not a long psalm it's only six verses um but if you're not a believer i still respect you i'm no better than you but i like reading um um bible verses for my ti believers you know but it's for the non-believers too to listen if you're open-minded you know psalms are very powerful books and david wrote them matter of fact when he was on the run from saul and if you read the bible um, the four chapters he was on the run from saul four chapters in a row and it seemed like he was being gang stalked you know, Saul had everybody against him and he and David was the king. So anyway, blessed is the man who walks not in the council, who walk not in the council of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the waters that bring forth in its fruit its season, whose leaves also shall not wither. Whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but they are like chaff, which chafe, which with the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Okay, here we go. Before I start this, I'm going to tell you something. Like, um, um, so... It's the American intelligence agencies use influence mapping on their targeted victims to map out by data mining a person or a group's emails, phone calls, etc. Your social circle, family circle to find out who it is in your circle, family and friends who's most important to you and who have the most influence over you. OK, now I'm going to go on with some good information. That's just kind of intro. OK, so there's other ways that they do this. They, they'll turn your family against you and friends against you. One, they'll make up that you're a pedophile. And we all know this, but I'm I'm covering this because the second way is the stuff that you really need to listen to. Because you wonder, well, I know they went in the smear campaign. They, well, I'm going to explain the other way they do it. And it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Okay, so they, got, they might call you a pedophile in the community or they might spread it around that you are a drug addict or um, a very bad drug addict addicted to drugs and you're manipulative or they might pull out that you're uh, a child abuser or they might pull out that you're selling drugs to kids and you're a drug, drug dealer or they might even pull out that you're a snitch um, and I've seen them go to links to create paperwork supporting their claims about you they will create false paperwork that looks real and go around the neighborhood showing it out and all that and you know it's not real um, so all I and then I put something uh, on Twitter and stuff about, you know, if somebody's slandering you in the TI community, um, creating false stories around, just keep calm, keep your character, be a good person. Don't stop speaking out. They're trying to discourage you either to get people to turn against you or trying to keep you to get silent and give up on trying to speak out and give up on trying to, you know, be a member of the TI community, whatever. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. And then OK, I'm, I'll stop in the middle and explain that they then target the people. All right. All right. On their by data mining a person's group, emails, phone calls, your social circle, who's in it, circle, family, friends, who's most important to you, who have most influence over you. Then they target those people with negative associative conditioning so that every time you come around or call, something bad happens, such as a sudden attack of nausea, headaches, direct energy attacks against family or friends, or their car breaks down, pet dies, etc. Until those people in your life who are important to you begin to correlate and identify all, uh, all of those negative events with the personal presence and begin to avoid you like the plague. 
This causes those friends, families, pastor, teacher, employer, etc. to leave you and abandon you or to make them become your enemy because of those false correlations. This is how they isolate the trauma-based mind control victim besides smear campaigns. Negative association conditions a psycho-cybernetic protocol involving behavior modification, which is very important in trauma-based mind control technologies. It depends on reinforcers or consequences to strengthen or weaken or give behavior similar to a Pavlov's dogs. For example, a child may learn to open a box to get the candy inside or learn to avoid touching a hot stove. Behavior modification. In trauma-based mind control, it's called behavior modification to death. Not behavior modification, but behavior modification to death. What the, what the CIA, DIA hive mind teams do is use a negative associated condition to isolate you by using a pain stimulus, physical, a physical or psychological or negative reinforcer or consequence against a family member or friend every time you come around or attempt to touch base with them by different means of communication. The animal paws right there. They also, you know, I have people watch my video. Oh, I got burnt when I, as soon as, every time I watch your videos, I get burnt. Yeah, because they don't want you getting that information and they're trying to get you to associate me as having something to do with it. You know, one person said, oh, you got this app and you got me on remote neural monitoring. Come on, man. <laughs> I, I, I understand how it works, but I wouldn't know how to run no app and I wouldn't use no app. And I'm not interested in torturing nobody. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. Well, I would on the ones doing it to me. I, I wish they would feel how it felt like. But I'm just saying it's a horrible feeling, you know, and for I can't understand how anybody does it to innocent people anyway. That's just not me. But this is part of what they're talking about. Or, you know, um, one person said, oh, you coughed in your video. Oh, my perks cough when they're around me. Well, man, you try to or clear your throat. Mom, you try to talk 20 or 30 minutes without clearing your throat. But this stuff is triggers to certain people, you know, or um, what else is it? Or oh, it's funny you mentioned that because I was thinking that at the same time, right when you posted that on Facebook. Um, but that does happen. Um, I mean, you do have perks that are listening to certain conversations or watching certain conversations and will post to let you know they're watching. But I'm just talking about something different here. OK, so each time you call or come over to visit, something negative or terrible happens to them enough times until they believe they, be, they believe that person begins to falsely associate and falsely correlate you with all those negative events and begins to avoid you or becomes your enemy. After it happens enough times, that person will begin to falsely correlate you with those physically or psychologically painful events and will begin to avoid you like the plague or turn against you and become your enemy, believing you ruin their lives or deliberately hurt them in some way. It's called negative associative conditioning, and it's a process which is easily achievable in just a very, in just very short few weeks or months. This is how influence mapping and negative associate conditioning works and is used against mind control victims. And it's just an example as the CIA DIA hive mind teams use it in various ways to isolate the victim, including to deceive and manipulate the mind control victim into false correlations. The others are attacking them cell phone with cell phones, ray guns, etc. Because every time that person comes around, the mind control victim is attacked with direct energy and suffer pains and trauma or remote neural attacks in connection with street theater, situational scenarios and conversational scenarios based on events or topics they know will capture the mind control victim's attention. So the mind control victim's convinced that the neighbor's attacking him or a family member, a friend, co-worker, etc. Because, for example, every time the neighbor comes, and let me finish, because I'm not saying neighbors don't attack, just let me finish, okay? So the mind control victims convinced the neighbors attacking him or a family member, friend, co-worker, etc. Because, for example, every time the neighbor comes home from work around 5 p.m. in the evening, the trauma-based mind control victim is attacked with direct energy. So then it is not necessary to isolate the victim for everyone in the world as that it is not possible, nor is it practical unless they can set up and frame the mind control victim and have them thrown in a prison or a mental institution. Even then, it becomes problematic. 
No, all that is necessary to fully isolate the trauma-based mind control victim is to map out their social circle, finding out who is important, influential in their lives, and then utilize influential mapping and negative associative condition in order to isolate them from family and friends and any support networks they may have to seek or seek to build, such as church, school, etc. So there we go, folks. That's all the information, but I'm just, you know, like I had somebody... Like, for example, David, I love your videos. It's good information. But every time I watch it, I get tortured after I watch it. And this person was a mature enough T.I. to realize, hey, I know it's not you doing it, you know. But sometimes you will get T.I.s who will be like, what? I get hit every time I watch your videos, dude. What's up with that? You know, or, you know, there's been times like I will be doing a video and I will start my, I will, my right now my eyes itching. If I'm to scratch my eye, it might trigger somebody. And, or you might be around family members and something weird happens every time you're around them. Well, they can create these scenarios to turn people against you. You know, they don't need smear campaigns, so, so to speak. There's a bunch of different things they can use to correlate that stuff. Um, so anyway, I hope y'all like that video. Um, I had to muster up energy to do it. Yesterday was a horrible day. Um, I ended up bouncing back some, you know, um, and I take vitamins, garlic, apple cider vinegar, honey. Uh, I try everything. Um, and now, you know, my food assistance is pretty much cut off. But, you know, uh, so anyway, uh, I still have a lot of stuff I'd stocked up on. But but what I'm saying is all that, you know, sometimes it helps and sometimes it don't. I know the other day I was very, very drained of energy and um, I cut a clove of garlic up in the morning. I had fresh garlic. Um, cut a clove up in the morning. Sorry about that. That was my camera going off. Um, but anyway, I let me turn it down so it don't go off again. I, I cut a clove of garlic up in the morning when I was feeling weak and, and like I didn't have energy. And you got to peel it, cut it, and I cut it in small pieces and drink it with milk because it can be hard on your stomach. And I had a little bit of energy, but these weapons drain you. And I, you know, I don't know what I'm being hit with. Uh, Robert Duncan says it's EEG heterodyning. Um, that's why no shielding I've ever tried worked. Um, the wet towel does work. It does not block it, but it keeps you cool. Um, and it's nothing like a frozen wet towel on your head when you're going through this. Um, some people even use the gel mask and there's a thing you can, uh, freeze and in there, it's something you buy off Amazon. I can't afford it, but, uh, you know, anything cool on your head when you're going through this, the only thing that's worked for me as far as when I'm being attacked, cause you know, my whole body buzzes with electricity and I'm talking about violently buzzes, not just no barely buzzing. I'm talking about vibrating buzz. And then the back of my head is swimming with shock. And a tiny uh, buzzing, shocking sound right there at my cerebral cortex right here um, at all times. And when I close my eyes, it gets 10 times worse. So I've been kind of sleep deprived lately, too. Um, however, um, you know, and that's why Robert Duncan says uh, sometimes benzos will help um, or um, some kind of psychiatric medicine helps. And I'm not telling nobody to take it. You know, I have uh, Seroquel. And I take a little bitty piece every now and then if I'm sleep deprived. And it does help throw it off some. But what helps me most, believe it or not, when I'm getting hit, and I know I shouldn't be rambling. I try to make my videos quick, but I feel like this might be helpful to somebody who's going through what I go through. Because, you know, direct energy weapons most of the time leave marks. Um, but uh, EEG heterodyning weaponized attacks remote, remote neural monitoring is as internal attacks on your body that need no marks. But what helps me is when I start, when I get two or three tasks to do at once and I start switching, alternating, but trying to get them all done at once, multitasking helps lighten it up some. But anyway, the, other than that, man, my body stays weak most of the time. So I'm going to try my best to start forcing myself to be active. Even when, you know, I'm lethargic, my body feels like jello, vibrating with electricity, and my shocks, I'm going to start trying to get stuff done. And start forcing myself to be active. So anyway, God bless every TI. I hope that was helpful. That information was helpful. Remember, anytime you have a request on what you want to know about, leave it in the comments. 
Also, if you like and if you like my videos, hit like. Um, it helps get the word out because that's strictly what this channel is about: getting the word out and hoping I can reach more than the new TI or the seasoned TI. But people who are skeptical, I hope I can wake them up to what's going on in my channel. That's my. That's why I put my heart in this channel, and that's the whole purpose of this channel. So anyway, God bless every TI. Um, and ever non-TI who don't know that they're suffering from this, but suffering from this. I pray it comes to an end one day. God bless.